I could be here all day. Greetings. Welcome back. We're going to do another one today. This one is going to be all about the pitfalls and the things that can go wrong for risk engineering visits. So uh, a pitfall is basically some hidden trap or snare, some danger or difficulty that we're trying to avoid. So I'm going to hopefully enlighten you to some of the things that I've run across in my career that uh, can sidetrack a good risk engineering inspection. Well, first off, who's interested in the risk engineering inspections? That, that, when we talk about getting sidetracked or having a uh, issue, a pitfall, it's going to be different for different people because different interests will drive different uh, parts of this process. Uh, we'll talk about what can go wrong and then how to avoid the trouble. Okay, so who's interested? The uh, first thing, you're insured, right? The people who are paying for the insurance, the ones who are doing all the uh, projects and fill, the, fulfilling the recommendations, they're going to have an interest, right? Broker's going to have an interest. Uh, your uh, risk engineer who writes the report is going to have an interest, right? The engineers who read the report, the underwriters who read the report, they're going to be interested. So let's talk about what uh, the insured's interests are. So uh, with, with your insured, you're gonna want risk improvement, right? You're gonna wanna get better. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed uh, frequently uh, in, in risk visits is that when you have a really good engineer who has some experience and, and has seen things at other facilities, the, uh, the site people like to hear what happened to the other plants. They really want to know about uh, lessons learned from other people's incidents. They want a roadmap to success. They don't want you just to leave them a list of recommendations that say that you don't comply with NFPA. They want to know what to do to get from where they are to what you think is a good risk. So they need a roadmap to success. They want to control expenses. They don't have an infinite budget to control losses. And we all have to remember that profits have to be produced before they need to be protect protected, right? Profits must be produced before they need to be protected. Balanced, clear recommendations. Okay, the, the a lot of times we see newer engineers maybe just cut and paste recommendations that uh, aren't quite specific to the risk or to the situation. And uh, as an insured, you would really like to understand that the recommendation applies to you and it's not just something that everybody gets, okay? Now, what about, uh, oh, I like this one. Making a recommendation for a door latch length. While it's technically correct, it diminishes the report's credibility. Yeah, I said that. And the reason I said it was we had a risk engineer from uh, Europe who came over and he was in a coal handling yard and there was a little switchgear building, no bigger than the bedroom that I'm in making this video. Uh, so it, it was a small area and uh, the, the room was protected. It was a switchgear room for the uh, motors that drove the conveyor belts, right? And it, if we lost it, we, we would basically have to replace the switch gear, but uh, we could run it with temporary equipment if we had to. It was protected with Halon for some crazy reason. Back in the day when uh, Halon came about, fire protection engineers thought it was a great idea to protect everything that had to do with electrical with Halon. So we had a Halon system in this room. And the great European engineer pointed out that the door latch engagement was not three quarters of an inch. It was about an eighth of an inch shy. And, uh, you know, he was concerned that that door might blow open when the Halon system discharged and that the Halon wouldn't be able to maintain concentration to extinguish the fire. I said, it doesn't matter. It's an electrical fire and it's going to put itself out as soon as the power clears. So we're not worried about building that, burning down this switchgear building. But he put a recommendation on the report and we had to address it. Bottom line is, you know, anything else he said is going to be taken with a grain of salt because he's worried over an eighth of an inch of door latch engagement. Don't let that be you. All right, brokers, what are we interested in? What do brokers want? They want the same thing that the insureds want, and they want it timely. They want the draft and the final reports on time. And, you know, it, it, we, we schedule these things months and months in advance. Just commit to the date that you know you can make it and promise to hit that date and hit that date. What we need to do is then get responses from the insured as to how they're going to treat the recommendation. 
it, we want them quickly because at this point, once the report's finished, it's probably very close to renewal time. And we're going to submit this information to the insurance markets, and we're going to need some sort of responses to go with the recommendations. One of the other things that brokers need uh, in, in an engineering visit that uh, prevents pitfalls is senior management involvement. If the senior management is there at the table, especially during the exit, we have a lot of uh, help with uh, number three and getting rapid response to the recommendations. What about the engineer who writes the report? The engineers who write the reports, gosh, what do they want first? Number one, they want to know when they're supposed to be at the plant. They want an early commitment to an inspection date. They uh, they realize that you know things can change and that uh, you know outages can pop up or you know forced outages. Things can happen, but they want to get that date on the calendar because believe me, everybody who writes these reports is booked solid for the whole year. So they they don't have the capacity to just move a visit a week. If you ask them to move a visit a week, you might get a date that's three months later. Okay. So uh, the other thing they want is timely responses to the request for information, hopefully before they even get to the site. And uh, with a well-managed program, you've got a share file site set up so that they can get that information. They can provide the request either by email or into the share site, but usually by email, then everything starts getting put into the share site. And when they get to the site, they want a temporary place to work. You know, they need a place to do interviews. They need a place to take notes. They need a place to review documentation. And because the engineers who write the reports are so important, they've got two pages. <laughs> and what else do they want? They want the brokers to coordinate all the other engineers because they really shouldn't. They don't have any, any relationship with the other insurance companies. And you may have half a dozen to a dozen other engineers on large chemical engineering visits. So, you know, you need that to be coordinated. And that, you know, the, the risk engineer who writes the report hopes that the broker does a good job at coordinating the other engineers, making sure that all the questions are respectful of the engineer writing the time so that he or she can get that report and get her questions answered before she leaves the site and then has to call the plant or call me and, and get, you know, me to start following up the plant to get information that they could have got while they were there. They want open and honest responses. They can tell when you're making up stories. They can tell when you're not being forthright. Okay, so just be open and honest. And there are things that, you know, we want to talk about during these visits and there's things that we don't want to talk about. Generally, just answer the questions they're asking openly and honestly. And then they want a timely review of the draft report. They go through all this trouble. They make their way all the way to your plant. And then they spend all that time interviewing people, reading all your reports. And then they summarize it down into what's going to be your report card that goes out to the rest of the world. Here's your chance to look at it. Do you agree with it? Are the, the facts correct? You know, regardless of whether you intend to rec uh, implement any of the recommendations or not, you really still need to review the draft to make sure that all the information is correct about the equipment that's being described for your facility. All right. Finally, we get to the engineers and the underwriters who read the reports. Okay, these this is kind of why we're doing it, it ultimately is to, you know, fulfill the insurance process. Uh, there's some benefits along the way that we picked up, but now we get to the point where the underwriters and the engineers that work for them want to understand the risk. Okay, so what's the big things they want? They want thorough documentation. They don't want just a nebulous description that this site has a gas turbine. They want to know the make and model. They want to know any kind of modifications that were done to that gas turbine. So there, there's a lot of detail. They want thorough documentation, probably more documentation than is possible in putting in a report by someone who is just reading all of last year's maintenance reports and then interviewing folks, trying to figure out what the uh, particular interests are for everybody is very difficult. They want an up-to-date status on all the open recommendations. They need to report that. All They know that that's going to be one of the first things that the underwriters look at. Some of the engineers are going to go right into those uh, engineering visits and engineering recommendations, and they want to see what's the status. Have you completed them? Don't forget the quote from one of our underwriters who said, no action, no quote. Do something on all your open recommendations, not just say we're evaluating them. You need to explain all the changes that have occurred since the last survey and that you anticipate 
in the next year. And, and they like to know about that because the, typically when facilities change is when risk changes. So they want to be aware of what the big changes are to understand if any major risk issues have, have popped up. The other thing they want to know about is values and loss estimates. Now they put these together and uh, very rarely do I see the insureds take a good look at what the, the, the hypothesis is or what the, the, the potential uh, maximum foreseeable loss scenario is. And uh, a lot of times they may look at that and say, well, that, you know, isn't exactly the way our facility would respond to that kind of a, an event. So I urge everybody to take a look at your values and loss estimates and uh, make sure you have them right. All right, pitfalls, I talked about the whole thing, risk engineering inspection pitfalls. Well, where were the pitfalls? The pitfalls are when we don't meet the interests right? If all those folks have all those interests and something falls through the cracks, that's a pitfall. And uh, those folks are going to be upset. So what can go wrong? What can cause the pitfalls? Communication. Uh, we've got to be able to make sure that everybody's on the, the same page, that we got everybody who wants to come to the visit on the invite list, that uh, the, the information that's needed for the visit is communicated back and forth till everybody's ready to go. And then um, make sure everyone's on the same page. Okay, it's 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 difficult. I've been on visits where, you know, folks get there the wrong day. They show up the wrong week. Uh, and, you know, I don't know if it'll ever stop, but uh, just keep working on communication. Next thing is scheduling. Scheduling, like I've already mentioned, can be very difficult when you've got these engineers who are uh, tied uh, tied up all year long right they're they're very busy and uh the plants are very busy whether it's a chemical plant or a power plant trying to get it on their schedule is very difficult so we want to start scheduling way ahead of time as far in advance as possible and want to confirm it as far ahead as possible all right documentation requests and production all right don't give them a a uh, big old data dump. You want to answer the questions and give them the information that they request. And you want to be responsive, okay? Don't pile on so much information that they can't find what they asked for and then turn around and say, well, I gave you what you were looking for. That's not, that's not uh, what we want to do. All right, and then physical location. If your location is in a weird place and, and you can't get there by the GPS address, then you know, send special instructions. Make it possible for us to get there, for everybody that's coming to the site to come um, via GPS. Next thing we can have a problem with is conducting interviews. If we uh, have uh, a confrontational arrangement uh, or if we have sort of a hot seat arrangement, then it's going to be that. The person who's on the hot seat is going to feel like they're on a hot seat. But if when they come in, people are laughing and that they're welcomed in and that they don't really get a sense of us and them and that it's just a, a relaxed conversation, the, the inspection and the interviews will go much better. All right. So when we look at records and what can go wrong, here's some things to think about. Uh, if you don't set up a, a share file site, you're probably not going to get a good transfer of the records. If they're all in emails, it's going to be very difficult to find them and put them all together at one, in one spot. Uh, if you fail to do that, a USB drive at the site with all the requested records would be great. Okay, And a pitfall would be not to have that. Uh, then lastly is a promise to send that USB drive with all that information with it uh, after the visit. One thing I want to point out, fire pump test results, uh, be careful because I have been on so many visits where the results are marked okay, but just start looking at the results with a you know eye of you know what were they supposed to be and what did they actually perform and you see that they're marked okay when they didn't perform okay so be really careful you're paying for these tests get it done right show them to your experts before you show them to the insurance companies and then again if you're showing them records don't show you know you, you should look first to see if you have any gaps in the dates or the information so be careful that you know you're providing complete and accurate records what can go wrong during the site tour? You name it, 
uh, temporary modifications as you walk around. You're gonna see things that you're gonna to have to ask questions about, housekeeping, hot work. If you see hot work, you're gonna to wanna to go look for the hot work permit, lockout, tag out. You're gonna to wanna to look and see, you know, is a, a component removed? Was it appropriately isolated and blanked? Uh, you know, you're gonna to wanna to look around for these kind of things that could uh, spell disaster when you do your, your walkthrough. Leaks and lights, hoses and cords, uh, you know, in all industrial facilities, especially those with some age on them, we start to see problems with leaks. We should start to see problems with the lighting and they go together. If you have a dark plant, it's hard to see the leaks and people will walk right by them. If you have a bright plant, the first day that something leaks, everybody can see it and something can happen. So keep your lights working and you're probably going to have less leaks. I understand the problems with outdoor lights. Then you start drawing bugs and insects and you start drawing another hazard that has to be dealt with. So it, it, it's not an easy problem problem as easy as just turning on the lights everywhere. So uh, do be aware though that it is a pitfall and uh, as you take your insurance inspection around the site, this is something that uh, can go wrong. Leaks and lights, hoses and cords. All right, what about the exit conference? What can go wrong there? Well, if senior management doesn't show up, and especially if they're on site and they don't show up, it sends a message to all the engineers that did the inspection that there's less of an interest in managing risk at that site than others they go to, right? Another pitfall is if it's confrontational. You know, even if you don't like the uh, mannerism of the engineer or the inspection, if you don't like the recommendations, it's best to try and just be polite, listen to it, and then your next step after that meeting is something that you can deal with whatever caused that confrontation. You don't want to try and solve that and argue in, in the meeting. Um, another pitfall can be unorganized engineers, whether it's the one writing the report, not knowing what questions to ask, or it's five or six other engineers rifling in questions while that engineer is trying to interact with one of the subject matter experts. So it's important that the engineers stay organized. Uh, if there's not enough discussion about all the improvements, if all we do in the exit is talk about the uh, recommendations, we've wasted our time. We've got to talk about the risk improvements and the things that make our facility good. I used to go to our friend's facility out in Bulgaria, who I keep talking about, and the European engineer who came out there was so good. He was a previous plant manager. He was a PhD. His guys, he was brilliant. And when the exit meeting would start, the plant manager would fill the conference room with about 30 of the people that work there. And there's about 1,500 employees. So 30 is the top echelon at this plant. And I asked, why are you bringing all these people in for these exits? And he said, because everything Chris says is so valuable. I want the rest of my team to hear it. Okay, that's the kind of exits that you want to have. Um, you talk about the good things and you want uh, your plant man, you want the plant to invite as many people in to hear that exit as possible. Then you know you're, you're having a good exit meeting when uh, a lot of people are asked to come attend it. Don't dwell on previous claims too much. They've already happened. Lessons learned are either learned or they're not. The uh, claim, if it's open, y'all can't talk about it. So don't dwell on it during the uh, exit interviews. And with that, I'll say thank you, and uh, hopefully you got something good out of this one. Send me some comments, let me know how you like it, and uh, we'll keep them coming. Thanks.